Hello, we're here to talk about dates today. Not those kind of dates. We're here to talk about the dates you put in Excel and that always kind of gets screwed up a little bit, but Power Query is here to help you out with that. When you upload to Power Query and you have those dates in there, you can do magical things. You can parse them by day, year, month, quarter, anything you possibly think of. And you can even apply dynamic filtering based on the current system date to the date you want. So let's all head on over to the spreadsheet. Okay, now that we're on the spreadsheet, let's check out our sales data. So we've got data here that has a bunch of dates for 2022 and 2023, as well as 24, with the product by salesperson unit and revenue. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this date column and we're gonna check out how many different ways we can easily parse that data up in Power Query. We're gonna create custom columns by year, month, day, quarter, and week of year. This can either be a number or a name, and we're also gonna look at dynamic filtering by these time periods right here. Let's dive right into Power Query. Let's start on our sales data. The very first thing we always do is create a table. Control A to select all, Control T to create a table. My table does have headers, select OK. And alternatively, you can always highlight all and go to the insert tab and insert a table. Let's name our table. Let's click inside the table, go over to table design, name. I'm gonna name it sales underscore table. Remember, you can't have any spaces in your table name. Head over to the data tab, click from table and range. This opens our Power Query editor. As you can see, our name table is already here. We've got our date and our entire table here. It automatically puts our date into a date time format. Under this home tab, you can see the format is date time. I usually move it to a date format, not a date time. I don't need to see the time. So I'm gonna select that. It's gonna ask me, hey, do you want to replace the current format or do you wanna create a new step? That's gonna be our steps over here. I'm gonna replace current. Power Query automatically changes all of your columns to the format it thinks best suits it. So it'll put it automatically in date time. So I flipped it back over to a date. Now let's dive right in to adding columns. So we can do this manually. We can add a custom column and manually add the year, month, date, and uh, day name. But Power Query does a lot of this for us. So we highlight the date column, it'll recognize, we've already told that it's a date, we can add column and we can hide on over here to the date and time and do a drop down here. You've got tons of options now. Really cool options, one you can do is age. This will, this will subtract the number of days from the current date to this date that's highlighted and tell you the age in days. So I'm gonna click on that just to give you a good idea. Look, so we're 803 days ago was the beginning of 2022 from the, when I was recording this video. So let's let's highlight again, select date. Let's see what other options we have. Year, I can select the year. I want to do that. I want to put the, parse the year out. And I want to go to month. And I want the name of the month so it's easier for my end user to look at. I can also do month where it would be the number of the month. New quarter. I want the uh, quarter in the year. This is gonna return one, two, three, four. And let's see what other options I've got. I've got quarter, week. This one, you can do the week of the year or the week of the month. If you're working on a retail calendar, week of the year might be really helpful. And going on down, you can go down to the day. Uh, do you do day of week, day of year, start of day? I'm gonna do the day of the week. And that you can see is a number value. If I wanted that to be a, I'm gonna delete that step and I'm gonna actually bring that to be the, the day name, the name of the day right here, over here. Awesome, so look at all these dates we have. Now you're asking, what can we do with this data? Well, this is awesome. So we can go on back, we can load this back to Excel and it asks us, hey, how do you wanna see this data? I'm gonna see it in a pivot table report and I'm gonna put it on an existing worksheet on the agenda tab and dump it right there. And this is the cool part. I'm actually gonna move this table down a bit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna product by revenue 
and we're gonna do it by year. And then we're gonna do month name over the top. So you can easily see year over year in January how you performed with varying products. So super easy way to do it. Now what if I say I've got a huge data set now and I want to know, I want to have a year to date filter so that this data that comes through here only shows me data that is year to date. Well, we can pop right back into Power Query. If you have the panel up over here, you can go over to the top and it says Queries and Connections. If the panel ran away from you, you can select the Data tab, go to Queries and Connections, and you'll see your connection up here. Double click to get right back into Power Query. Now let's go on over to this date and I want to filter. There is so many dynamic filters, it is fantastic. You go to date filter right here and you've got all of these options. So if I wanna do year to date, I select to go down to year and I, there's even a pre-selected option. If I wanna get rid of that and I don't want year to date, let's look at what we can do with the month. We can go in and we can select a few different options. We can do this month, last month, uh, or next month, but what if we want to do a custom filter because I want to see both last month and this month. So I'll go to advanced and my column is dates. My operator is going to be is in month, last month. This is important here. We got to change this and to an or or date is in month, this month and select OK. So this will just filter down our data dynamically by dates that are this month or last month. And as you can see, if we close and load this query, this is going to dynamically change to where it's just February and March, as it's March 14th right now, the date we're filming the video. So plenty of ways to dynamically do this. The nice part about it is if you add more data to the data set, and you refresh this report in two months, this is gonna dynamically change. You don't have to go into Power Query to change any of this data. If we wanna filter down for the last 365 days on a rolling basis, we can do that by going to the drop down, date filter, and is in previous, this is what you're looking for. And what you can do is you can go is in previous 365 days, or, and I always do this too, or is in day is what I'm looking for, is in day today. So this will get the last 365 days plus today for you. Select OK. And now you've got this dynamically filtered. So when you close this report and load it back, it's only going to show you the last 365 days. So as you can see, we don't have data for January, February, and March, but we are going to have data for the year going forward. So this could be a helpful view if people only wanna look at 365 days going forward. Let's do one more. This one's a little bit more complicated. Let's do a year to date and compare it to last year to date. So what I want this to look like is I only want data from 2023 that happened in January, February, or March. And I only want data this year that happened in January, February, or March. So let's head on back to Power Query double click in the sales table to load it up. I'm gonna delete my date filter. For this, I'm gonna do a custom filter. So I'm gonna go over to the add column, I'm gonna go to custom column, and we're gonna call this filter. And we're gonna use some Power Query M formulas. So these are actually really easy, and there's if you click on this link here, it'll bring you to a website that'll explain all the formulas. But um, the formula I know I need to use is we're gonna parse out the year first. So date year. From we want to take the year from the date value. And we want to know when that equals the date dot year from date dot from we're asking it to take the date from a date time value of right now, local now is the one to use, date time of local now. As you can see, if you press tab and you, you, you auto fill the formulas, it'll keep what you had beforehand, so you gotta go back and delete it to make sure. Open and close parentheses, just like if you're using a today formula. Close, I'm gonna close that parentheses and I'm gonna go minus one, because I want a year ago today. 
close my parentheses. I got no error, so I'm good to go there. I'm gonna add an if in front of there because we're gonna make this a conditional statement. So if day dot year date equals day dot year date from, because it's parsing out this date time value and making it just a date. If that equals a year ago from today and date dot month, we're parsing out month and we're gonna do the exact same thing of date. I can double click over here for my available columns is less than or equal to, we're just gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna copy this over and I'm gonna change this year formula out for month. And I'm gonna get rid of the negative one because we no longer need that. So this year, I'm gonna parse it out to month. And we're gonna do it one more time. And we're gonna go date dot day of year. We don't want to do, we want to do day of year. We don't want to do day because then it'll dynamically filter out any day, even in January. If say it's January 15th, that would take out anything that's, that's after the 15th of every month. We don't want to do that. So we want to do day of year, double click there to get our date formula in there. And date day of year is less than or equal to, and I'm gonna steal my formula from up here, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna change out the month to day of year. Day of year. Then we wanna put last year. Now we're gonna do an else if statement. I'm gonna start a new line over here. Else if, now this one's a lot easier. Date dot is in current year. We can just ask it, is this in current year? Open parentheses. We're gonna double click on date. Then we wanna put this year. Else, so if it's not in this year or in last year, year to date, else we're gonna do null so we can filter it out. And I don't have any syntax errors, so we should be good to go. Select OK. Whoopsie, we got some errors. Let's figure out where our errors came from. Double click back on in here. Okay, so there's an issue with my formula right over here with our date year, date from, date time now. We've got to take this minus one and put it after the formula so that it's calculating the year first and then subtracting one. So over here, minus one outside, and let's see, we should be good to go now. Yep, looks good. Okie dokie. So now at this point, we have null values last year, and if we scroll down, it should also say this year. So what we can do is we can simply just say remove empties or uncheck nulls, but I'm gonna say remove empties. So here's your last year to date, plus you got a column that's saying if this is last year or this year. Let's close and load our data and make sure it looks like how we expect it to look. And look, it does. Perfect, so we have January, February, March for 2023 as well as 2024. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like seeing Excel tutorials and Power Query tutorials, please follow and subscribe for more.